Hi there, I'm Eric Summerer. On this episode of Summerer Time, three games with themes from the 1980s, one of which my new friend over here might really enjoy. Let's start the clock. Transformers Deck Building Game is, well, a Transformers-themed deck building game in which players represent characters moving around a card array called The Matrix, discovering cards and expending resources to acquire them into their deck or defeat them in order to score points. The game has both a competitive mode where Autobots collect points for completing tasks and defeating adversaries, including three Decepticon bosses, and a cooperative mode where the bots work together to take down the three bosses without taking too much damage or running out of time. In either mode, the three bosses are seated in a master deck, which also includes lesser enemies, evil schemes, and beneficial cards like equipment, relics, other Autobots, and human allies. As players explore the Matrix and remove those cards, they'll be replaced face down from the main deck, eventually allowing the bosses to be discovered. Once all three bosses have been defeated, or if the main deck runs out, the game is over. Players start with a 10-card basic deck and a specific Autobot character card and standee. The bots have both robot and vehicle modes, with different strengths and weaknesses, and you can spend Energon cubes to transform between modes. Cards display stats like Power, which helps recruit cards, Attack, which helps defeat enemies, and Move, which allows you to move around the matrix and search the cards you find there. If you reveal an adversary on your space, they ambush you and any other Autobot there, which can be nasty. You'll also see these cards when you move on to an adversary's space or confront one of the bosses on your turn. The bosses will also ambush all players when they show up. Attacks can be blocked with cards in your hand, but then you won't have that card for other uses. Players can assist each other if in range and share in the rewards if successful. In co-op mode, this is a no-brainer and always allowed, but in competitive mode, you can only assist if the battling player is damaged or if it's a major boss battle. Adversary cards don't go in your deck, but instead you gain the rewards printed on the bottom of the card. If you're playing co-op, instead of gaining victory points, you gain Energon instead. In addition to transforming, Energon can be used for other cool abilities, depending on your character. Damage cards, which come from various adversarial effects, sit in front of you. They're worth negative points in competitive mode, but in co-op mode, if you ever have five or more damage, the whole team loses the game. Thematically, I don't really get the competitive game. Yes, it's a friendly competition among the Autobots, but stuff like kill stealing or refusing to accept assistance to withhold points just seems off. The co-op game makes far more sense, teaming up to take down the bad guys and save the day. One confusing element in this set, the Decepticon cards look like they can be added to your deck with stats and effects just like the Autobots, but they cannot in this set. All that matters is their strength and the reward text at the bottom. Presumably, this allows for the upcoming Team Play expansion that will let you play as the Decepticons, but for now, it's a little weird. Still, this game makes me excited to transform and roll out with my friends. 7 out of 10. The Goonies Never Say Die is a one versus many adventure game in which the majority of players take on the role of the Goonies and explore a series of scenarios in search of one-eyed Willie's goal. One player is the Goondock's master, or GM, revealing the map, reading story elements, and sending creatures and villains at the Goonies in order to slow them down. The Goonies must complete a scenario-specific objective, which may even be unknown to them at the start of the game, before the hourglass counter runs out. A round consists of all of the Goonies taking one turn each in any order they wish, followed by the GM taking a turn for the foes. Each Goonie gets two actions and can use any of their treasures and item cards, as well as their special abilities. Actions include moving to an adjacent room, searching a token in your room, attacking foes, and taking adventure actions like clearing rubble or interacting with map features. Moving into an unexplored passage will reveal what's in that room, as well as possibly triggering story elements from the GM. Many of these actions require dice checks to complete. Searching a treasure chest is a search check, while fighting a foe is a strength check. A Goonie starts with two dice for any particular check, but can improve their odds of success in two ways. Each Goonie starts with a number of these Wish Tokens, and they gain one on each of their turns. A Wish Token can be spent to upgrade the smallest die on a check to the next level, a D6 to a D8, or a D8 to D12. In addition, another player can spend a token to contribute one of their dice to the check, with the restriction that a maximum of three dice can be rolled on any one check. 
Bone symbols are successes, while this GM symbol rewards the GM with a GM token, which are sort of like wish tokens for the GM. Successful searches result in gaining items and treasures, while successful attacks could result in removal of that foe. The three older teen characters from the film are represented by these placards, which offer one-time use abilities to help out the Goonies. Once the Goonies have each taken a turn, the GM gets a GM token of their own and then can activate all of the foes on the board with both a move and attack. GM dice can also be upgraded using GM tokens. Goonies can block damage with wish tokens, and any unblocked damage gets marked with tokens. If a Goonie runs out of health, they're knocked out and the sand timer moves one notch. After activating foes, the GM gets to draw and play a GM card and can spend tokens to draw or play additional cards. One particularly nasty type of card allows the GM to roll for the chance to move the sand timer one notch. Anytime the sand timer moves, the Goonies get to reactivate one of the teen placards, but if the GM starts a turn with all of the sand at the bottom of the hourglass, they win the scenario. The base game includes nine adventures, and the Under the Goondocks expansion offers an additional three, as well as playable versions of the three teen characters. Never Say Die is sort of a descent light, with enjoyable exploration and a healthy dose of mystery. The game is dripping with theme, with quotes and illustrations galore, providing an enjoyable family weight adventure that will have you queuing up the classic film for another viewing. 8 out of 10. The Princess Bride Adventure Book Game is a cooperative narrative game that tells the story of the classic film over the course of six chapters, each one page in the adventure board book. Chapters range from the early romance of Buttercup and Wesley, to the duels above the Cliffs of Insanity, to the grand finale in Humperdinck's Castle. Players collect and share cards in order to manipulate the characters from the film and complete story tasks before the child gets bored and gives up on the story. Since each chapter has a different set of cast members, players don't represent individual characters. Instead, they have access to any of the figures on the board on each of their turns. A turn consists of several steps. First, a free move of one character up to two spaces, or two characters one space each. Then, a series of adventure actions, which include discarding cards for additional movement, trading one card for one from a teammate once per turn, and completing challenges by discarding sets of cards once various conditions have been met. For example, to defeat the Shrieking Eels, Buttercup needs to be in the water, Fezzik needs to be at the railing of the boat, and the active player needs to discard a Courage and Adventure card. Players can earn special cards that can be spent for special benefits, and Miracle Tokens collected from the board allow players to draw three regular cards or one card from the special deck. Special cards get discarded to the main deck discard, so they can cycle back around when the deck gets reshuffled. Once a player is done taking adventure actions, they draw two cards from the main deck, and then one card from the plot deck, which is a set of numbered cards, 1 through 20, which then corresponds to different effects depending on the chapter. If the plot deck runs out before all tasks are completed, players reset the chapter completely and keep playing. If that happens a second time, the child stops listening and goes back to playing video games. The game is lost. After discarding down to six cards, it's the next player's turn. Play continues until all objectives have been completed or the players lose. When completing a chapter, players discard all their cards, shuffle the discard pile into the deck, and set up for the next chapter. Any special cards the players earned will remain in the deck for future chapters. The game also includes rules for saving your game in between chapters, in case your group needs to take a break. Ultimate victory is achieved upon completion of the sixth chapter. Players rejoice in their shared victory, and Wesley and Buttercup live happily ever after. This game is bursting with theme, from the titles of objectives to quotes all over the place to small little hidden touches. Fans of the film will be attempting their best Fezzik line readings in no time. The iconic set pieces bring to life those memorable scenes. However, this adherence to the plot of the film means that future plays will have you doing the same tasks over and over again each time, which, depending on how much you've watched the film over and over, may be a plus. This is a straightforward, entry-level cooperative game, which is an excellent option for fans of the film. Six out of ten. All right, time for the stack, which is the relative ranking of my enthusiasm for these three titles. I really like The Princess Bride. It's a solid game and a, a great intro to cooperative games, but it's probably not going to see a lot of table time for me. 
just because it is that simple. Uh, Transformers, I really enjoy. There's a lot of potential in here, but I think it's incomplete until that team expansion where you can play the Decepticons comes out. I'm most excited about the Goonies. Uh, there is a lot to explore in here. I love the mystery of causing something to happen, then a secret door opens. Uh, I'm really excited to, to inflict this upon the children and, and play more of the Goonies. There we go. Until next time, I'm Eric Summer. Thanks for watching.